Many immigrants go through several stages in their adaptation process to a new country. Some take longer than others to adopt, and this may be related to very different conditions that they have lived for the past years before coming here in Canada. So for today's episode, we're going to talk about the life struggles as an immigrant, and I'm going to share you my experience for the past three years as an immigrant here in Canada. So stay tuned. This video is not made to make a lot of excuses, but this is something we need to talk about. At number 5, the French language. For some people, this may be their top one reason why they're leaving the province of Quebec. But for me, the reason why I put this at number 5 is because me as an immigrant, it is my responsibility to study and live for the language. But sometimes, when the frustration kicks in, it's just too much to handle. For example, at work, you have that one co-worker who knows the language, but they just don't know how to work. While you, on the other hand, you know how to work, but at the end of the day, you feel incomplete. It's just inevitable. I really like to learn the language. That's why I've studied French for part-time for more than a year. And I just felt like I need more time to study it and live for it. But for how long? At number four, the four seasons in Canada. Are you familiar with Carol King's You've Got a Friend? Winter, spring, summer, or fall in the lyrics? In Canada, we have it all sometimes in one day, and it's crazy. As an immigrant who comes from a tropical country, it took me time to adjust for the weather because the weather here in Canada is unpredictable. The four seasons in Canada are winter, spring, summer, and fall. The fall season is my favorite season because seeing the leaves turn to different colors is just amazing. And the season that I hate is the summer because the humidity here is just too much. It's like breathing air with fire. And the third struggle as an immigrant is to take the public transportation during winter season. Imagine yourself, it's below zero degrees and you're going to go outside for work and you're expecting the bus to come by in five minutes. However, after five minutes, you just realize the bus is late. What's worse, the bus will not come at all. Taking public transportation during winter season takes a lot of patience. And of course, you just have to suit up to warm you up. I know you'll be thinking, well, just buy a car. Well, I hope that's easy, but getting a license here in Quebec is a challenge, but not a struggle. The second life struggle as an immigrant is to feel homesick. Feeling homesick is normal while you get used to living in a new country no matter how old you are or where you come from. I remember when I got sick because I got the flu virus when I arrived here in Canada and no one is taking care of me. So what I did, I had to set an alarm because I need to take the medication and I just missed my mom's cook because every time I get sick in the Philippines, she will cook for me a champurado and that will make me feel better. What is a homesickness? Homesickness is the mix of emotions that people experience when they leave their familiar home and find themselves in a new and unfamiliar environment. It is often a deep longing for home and can be associated with feeling upset or depressed. You may feel your usual way of life has been disrupted. To all of the immigrants out there, please take good care of your mental health status because living alone or living in a new country outside of your home country takes a lot of courage, so it's okay to seek help. And the top one life struggle as an immigrant is to send money abroad. According to new data from Statistics Canada, Filipinos in Canada transferred more money, a whopping $1.2 billion, to friends and family, living abroad than any other group in 2017. For many immigrants, Sending money home is an absolute necessity. Our family relies on this financial support to pay the safe housing, buy enough food, obtain health care and education and support family members who are unemployed or retired. The home country often has no way to provide the social support we are so fortunate to have in Canada. 
One of the toxic cultures that we have is that our family members, our neighbors, and our relatives are thinking that we are in abroad, which means that we earn a lot of money. But they don't consider that we also have a lot of bills to pay. I always believe in the saying, it's better to give than to receive. But don't get me wrong, if you are a new immigrant, please try to save as much as possible and try to send what is left because who knows, we might lose our job in the next month and who will going to save us? That's it for now and I have to be honest with you, this is actually the most difficult topic that I have discussed right now because I have to be more sensitive. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you again soon.